What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to type on a path in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see I have Illustrator up and running and we're ready to get started already. So what I'm going to do first is create a path. So what I'm going to do is go over here to my shape tool. It would have these different icons. It would say rectangle tool, ellipse tool, polygon tool, star tool, or line segment tool. So what we're going to use first is line segment tool. So I'm going to click on that. I'm just gonna draw a line anywhere on here, but you probably can't see it because it's red on red. Okay, so I changed the color of the layer, so now you guys can see that line that we created. But now so you guys can see it better, I'm gonna go up here to these little boxes right here. This little box right here would indicate the color fill of my line, and this will be the stroke of the line. And since in my case I have a line, I'm just gonna mess with the stroke. So I'm gonna click on that drop box and all these colors will appear. I'm gonna hit black. And then I'm just going to increase the thickness of the stroke. So the way you guys can see it. So that's the line that we drew. And now what I'm going to do is just make a curve to this line, pretty much. So I'm going to go up here to my pen tool. And I'm just going to add an anchor point anywhere on this line. So I'm going to add an anchor point here and add an anchor point here. But of course you can add it anywhere on this line. But for my purposes, I'm just going to create a curve with these two anchor points. So now that we're done adding those, I'm going to go back up here to this white arrow. Not this first one, but the second one. And I'm just going to tap on one of these anchor points and begin to make adjustments to this line. And obviously those are not curves. So I'm going to go over here and click on curve. I'm going to do that with both anchor points that I made. And there, we got ourselves a curve. But in case you want to change the position of these anchor points, you can definitely do that with that same white arrow. And also you can change these curves by clicking on one of these handles and doing it that way. All right, and there's the curve that we're going to use to do this type on a path tool. So what I'm going to do now is go over here to my text tool. I'm going to click and hold on it. I'm going to go to type on a path tool. So I'm going to click that. And you may notice that my cursor may have a dotted curve line intersecting it. That means I've activated type on a path tool. And that means I can click anywhere on this line and begin typing on this curved path. So I'm gonna click here and there. My text generates onto that path. So what I'm gonna do now is adjust the fonts because now that it's there, I can change the font, the alignment, the size, the color. I can do all that now. Just how I would any kind of font in any kind of text box but you may notice that the stroke of the path is now gone. So that disappeared, but the path itself is still here. But on any path in Illustrator, there's a start and an end. So as you can see, on each end of this path, I have a line that looks something like this with a white square on it. Right here would be the starting point because that's where I clicked on to start this path. And over here would be the end point, which is where this curve ends. And what's cool about this is that I can adjust it. So first, let me align the text so that it's centered. So I'm gonna hit Command A or Control A. And then I'm gonna go up here to Paragraph. I'm gonna center it. So that way it's in the middle of the path. So that way I can show you guys what happens when we change the starting or the stopping point of this type on a path. So I'm gonna go over to the stopping point. And as you can see, my cursor has an icon that has a line with the arrow going backwards. So when that icon pops on my screen, when I click on that square, I'm able to move it to and from like this. So right now I'm changing the stopping point of this type on a path, path. And since my text is already centered, it'll center it for me so that way I can see what I'm doing. So I can align it here would be a good spot and then I can let go. So I have my type over here on this part and then the rest of that won't have any text unless I move this back to where it was. But this is super useful in case you're not satisfied with your starting point. But you can always change that too by doing the exact same things. But remember to have that icon by your cursor every time you want to change the starting or the stopping point of your type on a path. So in my case, I'm going to change that so that way it's all the way over here to the starting point of the curve. And then I'm going to align this back to where it was. And since my text is still centered, it'll align directly in the center of this curve, which is right here. But now let me do that again with just a simple arc. So I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to go back to my line segment tool. I'm just going to create a straight line. I can hold the shift key while I do that to make it straight straight. I'm going to go back to my pen tool, add an anchor point in the middle, then go back to my white arrow. 
and just play around with that. And then to make that curved, all you gotta do is hit this. And then on that anchor point comes two handles because on the anchor point here, that's a square. And then the handles will be circles. So I can just align that to here, align that to here. And then let me change the stroke so you guys can see that. So make that black. And now you guys can see the line that I just created. So now let's go back to our text. Type on a path. And keep in mind, when I click on this path to add the text on it, this entire line stroke will disappear. But the shape itself will stay because I want the text to be on that shape. So I'm going to click anywhere on the shape. And since the previous text that I use is centered, so will the text that I add in the future, unless I change that if I want. But let's do type on a path. And as you can see, it looks a little off because the center point would be right over here. But that's because the starting point doesn't go all the way over here to the end of the curve. But the stopping point does. So let's go ahead and change that. So again, look for this point before you click on anything. And there we go. We have it actually aligned to the center. But now let's go to some type on a path options. So I'm gonna make this big, because we're gonna need to see this. So I'm gonna have this selected, and then I'm gonna go up here to type. Then I'm gonna go to type on a path, and you see all these options. I'm about to show you guys what this looks like in a minute, but right here, let's click on type on a path options. And then all the options that I just showed you, that's the, over here on this drop box. So that would be the effect panel. So right now it's already set to rainbow and typically that's the effect that you're going for when you're doing this type on a path tool. And then there's all these other effects. So skew, the top and bottom of the text will have the same curve as the path itself. Then we have 3D ribbon. I'm not sure how to explain it, but that's what that looks like. And then we have stair step, which makes the type look like stairs that you're going up. And then in my case, it's going back down. But again, that's why it's called stair step. So it's kind of self-explanatory, but that's that. And then we also have gravity. I will admit that does look kind of cool, but personally, I don't think I would use this. But that's what gravity looks like. But as a default, you would have rainbow, which would look like this. Have the text kind of rotated along with the path. And then right below it will be a Dropbox for align to path. So this little green, so this little green line that we made with our anchor points, that's the baseline. And that's like another default setting that you would get when you're doing this type on a path thing. And when you align the text, you can align it with the ascenders, the descenders, and the center. So you can have it literally going through this path like this. But personally, I like to have my text sitting on the baseline. So I'm gonna switch that back to baseline. That way it sits on that path. So that makes everything a little bit easier. But when it comes to spacing, they're really talking about the spacing of each letter. So that you can definitely change somewhere up here, but while we're still over here, we can still change that. So let's see what happens when we set it to negative 36. And not much of a difference there, but let's set it to zero and see what happens. Again, not much of a difference, but you saw that there was a change. But let's see what happens when we set it to positive 36. Yeah, not much of a difference. So I guess you can really change that when you come over here. And then you'll also notice that there's a checkbox here that says flip. So if I click on that, then the text that we had would be flipped. So let's hit okay for now. And then I'm gonna rotate that 180 degrees. So it's basically everything upside down when you think about it. So this flip option really helps if you're looking to do the same thing but upside down. So like, let's leave it on the setting for now and show you guys what that looks like. So I'm gonna make a copy of it real quick so I can show you guys a direct difference. And then I'm gonna rotate this shape 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna flip this back to normal. So let's go back up here to type on a path. Type on a path options. And we're gonna uncheck this checkbox. And see, that way if you wanted to type on a circle but still have the text right side up, you can do that. So that's why I think this is kind of useful. But speaking of which, let me show you guys how to type on any kind of shape. So let's make this invisible for now. And I'm gonna make a new layer. So let's go over here to our line segment tool again. We're gonna click and hold on it. And we're gonna go to our ellipse tool. And we're gonna make a circle. 
So we're just gonna click and drag anywhere on the screen. But obviously my circle isn't perfect, but to make a perfect circle, all you gotta do is hold down the shift key and make your perfect circle. And then I'm gonna go back to my type on a path tool. And I'm gonna click anywhere on this circle. So I'm gonna click here and start my path. And as you can see, the circle itself disappeared. Well, that's what happens when you draw a shape and you wanna type on it. But if you wanted that shape to stay, you'll have to either duplicate it or have it on its own layer. But either way, when you type on a path tool, the shape that you used initially will disappear. But the shape itself will still be here because you know we're typing on that path. So I typed in type on a path, and as you can see, the alignment is still the same. I have it centered, which is over here. So the starting point will be where I clicked on, which is why this line is here. And then it goes all the way around the circle to our stopping point, which is on the other side of this line. So I'm gonna hover over this square and make sure this icon is visible along with my cursor. And then I'm ready to change that. So I can just click and drag. So let me zoom out to show you guys. And see, as I shift this along the circle, the text will still have a centered alignment. And the text is still in blue, so anywhere that I move this point, the text will still be centered, so that way I can really see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna align it here. And there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this, so that way there's two of them now. I'm gonna select just one of them. I'm gonna go back to type. Go to type on a path, type on a path options. Then I'm gonna check this checkbox that says flip. I'm gonna flip that. And then what I'm gonna do is rotate this same circle 180 degrees and then align it with our first circle. It's gonna be hard to do that, but as you can see, it's still a circle. And then like we did up here, we can change the starting and stopping point of both circles. So as you can see, I'm doing that right now. And it's still centered, so that way I can see what I'm doing. And boom. And just for fun, I'm actually going to throw in the Pinterest logo. I already have it copied to my clipboard. All I got to do is paste it. And then I'm going to make it just as big as the circles that we created. And I'm just going to, and just for fun, I'm just going to change one of these bits of text to Pinterest and just like any other text I can resize it how I want change the color change the spacing change the font I can do all that now but yeah that's how you type on a path in Adobe Illustrator so if you liked the video or if you found it useful give it a like and a comment subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I'll see you in my next video I